Welcome back to another video. My name is Austin Zayback, and if you're brand new to my channel, I appreciate you watching the video. We're going to talk today about a novation, okay, as it pertains in particular to real estate investing. And if you're watching the video, you're probably familiar with wholesaling real estate, uh, or you flipped a house, or you eventually want to get into real estate investing. And novations are actually very popular and becoming more popular in 2023. And I wanted to make a video breaking down what a novation is step by step and really the five key things that you need to know before you ever try to go out and do a novation. And if you're brand new to my channel, I really appreciate you tuning in. Like I said, my name is Austin. I'm actually a real estate wholesaler uh, and I own a couple of companies and we actually wholesale anywhere from 30 to 50 houses a month, uh, which is about one to three properties a day, depending on the day. And I run a very large wholesaling operation, but a lot of people have been talking about the novation, okay? And I actually just had on my podcast a guy by by the name of Rich Wonders, and he is called the Novation King, okay? Uh, and, you know, he's the king of novations at the end of the day, and I actually learned a lot from him during the podcast, and I'm going to be sharing with you right now, you know, everything you need to know about a novation. And if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you would take just a second and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Uh, it definitely will help a lot get the video out to more people. The first thing you need to understand is what is a novation, okay? And a novation actually just means the replacement of contract. Now, the way that we're obviously using innovation is we're using it uh, to actually take a property that would have otherwise, you know, probably been a good wholesale deal. And we're taking that and we're actually putting it on the market for a retail buyer to actually buy the deal. Now, if you're familiar with wholesaling, then you probably know, you know, with wholesaling, you're basically getting a property under contract, you know, below market value. Typically, um, you're the buyer, you're getting it under contract with the seller, and then you're just taking that purchase contract and you're assigning it to an end buyer, typically a cash buyer, a flipper or a landlord or something like that. Everything is typically done off market, hence, you know, wholesaling. Now, obviously you can do stuff on market, but for the sake of the video, we'll kind of say that wholesaling is more of an off market game where you're, you know, getting a distressed seller to sell a property below market value, assigning that contract for a profit to a cash buyer. But with innovation, you're actually talking to that same potential seller, but as opposed to you taking that property and selling that to a cash buyer off market, you're actually typically going to be listing the property on the market with an agent and you're gonna be getting a retail buyer. So novation itself just means replacement of contract. So okay. the term itself is pretty ambiguous and it's kind of broad. Now, the way that we use novations is we list wholesale deals on the market mm -hmm. and the novation agreement occurs when our third party buyer is using a loan. Mm. So it's kind of, there's two parts to it. There's listing the deal publicly and having the seller understand that. And then the second part is being able to sell to a retail buyer if the deal's a fit for a retail buyer. Mm. So the beauty okay. of that is it opens up like a huge spectrum of potential buyers that you're not gonna get with cash only or mm. off market type of deals. So I've wholesaled about 2,500 houses in my career, okay? I've wholesaled a lot and I'm actually one of the biggest wholesalers in the nation. And I get asked all the time, right? Like, why would a seller do a novation, right? And, you know, that kind of goes hand in hand. You, and I'll make another video on it. But, you know, I also get asked, like, why would a seller do a subject to, right? And those are two things, you know, obviously, we're focused on the novation in the video that we're talking about now. But, you know, those are really good questions, right? Why would a seller want to do a novation? Like, and for whatever reason, you know, people cannot wrap their brain around it. And, you know, until I had, you know, Rich Wonders, you know, on my podcast, you know, even for me, and I've done a couple of novations, okay, but obviously my specialty is wholesaling. And I'm telling you right now, it's actually quite simple. The reason a seller would want to do a novation is because the seller is typically actually distressed, okay? You know, with wholesaling, typically the seller is distressed and the house is actually distressed, okay? But with a typical, like, ideal novation, right, where a seller would want to do a novation, you know, the seller, they, they need to sell for some reason, right? But for whatever reason, they don't necessarily want to take a cash offer 
you know, they don't want to sell their home at 50 cents on the dollar, okay? Um, but they also don't want to go deal with putting it on the market, hiring an agent, dealing with the showings, dealing with repairs, you know, all of the things associated with actually taking a property and selling it on the market. You know, they don't want to deal with that either. And they're in this kind of weird, you know, middle ground where they're kind of banging their head up against the wall trying to like, you know, they want to net more money than, you know, selling to a wholesaler. You know, they want that white glove kind of concierge. They want the convenience of cash, but they don't want, you know, the opportunity cost of taking 50 cents on the dollar. The sellers that we're speaking to normally, they have some sort of situation or some sort of issue going on because these are the same sellers that are looking for cash offers, right? Because we're, we're doing traditional wholesale marketing for mm -hmm. the for the most part, there's not yep. really a way to market for innovations. Mm -hmm. We're marketing for motivation. Mm -hmm. So whether you're cold calling, direct mail, PPC, we're looking for people that are wanting to sell their house. And when we take them through our negotiation process for a cash offer and find out that it's not going to be a match, mm -hmm. maybe the property's too nice and they can't take a big enough discount for us to profitably sell it to a, a cash buyer, right? Or you know, there's lots of different situations where it won't work in the wholesale box, mm -hmm. but they're still not looking for the traditional experience, right? Mm -hmm. They're not looking to list it with an agent. Maybe they had a bad experience. Maybe there's some minor work that needs to be done mm -hmm. for, for whatever reason, right? Yep. So basically what we promise them is a hands-off white glove experience where they know what they're going to be netting. They understand we're going to be marketing to and selling to third party. And we just promise to deliver the experience deliver the result on the silver platter. Mm. So mm -hmm. what they're looking for is certainty and peace of mind. So for most people, like this is not something where you take like a normal home seller and then turn them into an ovation mm -hmm. contract. There's like, we're not taking these deals from yeah. agents. These are deals where they're banging their head against the wall, rattling around from wholesaler to wholesaler. No one can give them an acceptable offer. And then they come into our pipeline and then we have a perfect solution mm -hmm. because they're looking for the hands-off experience, but they can't necessarily take 50 cents on the dollar or whatever is going to be required to, to get it off market. So the biggest thing I think about when I think of Novations is I think about, you know, the white glove kind of concierge, right? And that isn't actually something that you think about in wholesaling typically, right? And again, you know, we wholesale a lot of deals, but at the end of the day, with wholesaling, we're typically not, I mean, we're, we're giving them a good service, don't get me wrong, but it isn't like, white glove concierge, right? Like at the end of the day, we're just buying a house in cash, right? We're typically offering below market value. We're definitely solving a problem for that type of person, but it's not like a hand holding like experience, right? And with innovation, you know, I think that the really the way that you do it and the way that you get good at it, the way that you make a lot of money doing novations, right? Like Rich Wonders, who's doing you know, 20 novations a month on average, and his average, you know, novation is about a $30,000 profit, right? In order to do that, you've got to be able to deliver an experience, right? You have to be able to talk to that seller, right? And really walk them through the entire process and really set the expectation perfectly with them of, you know, how you're going to handle it. You know, you're telling them the, the exact, you know, number that they're going to be walking away with, and you're really delivering, you know, the the end result to them, you know, on a silver platter, right? And that in and of itself is why somebody would do a novation. It's always like a real consultative approach. Mm -hmm. And even when they say they don't want showings, normally they just don't want the worst case scenario mm -hmm. of people coming through all the time, being on call. So normally what we'll do is we'll, you know, depending on the situation, we'll find a couple days that work, block off some time. Uh, often like I'll sell them or send them a gift card so they can go and, and buy lunch or dinner and or go be entertained for the day, right? Yep. Try, I always try to do small things to kind of make their life easier mm. um, because I realize like this is an, ex the reason they choose to go with us is for the experience. Mm. So you, you kind of have to look at it through like a service mindset of, okay, how can I give them the optimal experience? So, mm -hmm. You know, if they want zero showings, like we have a, a price where we can say, hey, look, if you agree to this price, there will be zero showings. Yeah. Like we will buy it sight unseen. <laughs> now you're probably going to cringe when you see what that number is. Yeah. But, you know, we can find a happy medium where often like if we if we have a full weekend day and maybe like one or two good time block windows during the week, mm -hmm. normally that's more than sufficient because 
we're pricing the property aggressively. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for early traction. We don't try to shoot for the moon or shoot for the stars and land on the moon with this. Like we look to have it get an offer within two weeks. Mm -hmm. And we set the expectations with the realtors that we hire from the beginning too, where they understand that we're also crowdsourcing their opinions when we're interviewing the other realtors to make sure like we ask them, hey, you know, in your professional opinion, uh, where do you think we would need to price this to Mm -hmm. sell in 30 days or less, get an acceptable offer? So there's a lot of checks and balances before we actually start the listing to make sure there's not a false start Mm -hmm. and we're not setting the wrong expectations with the seller. Mm. Because normally within a few showing windows, like we want an acceptable offer coming in. Mm -hmm. So it's on a case by case basis. And some sellers, like if they're retired, they're cool. Mm. They're like, hey, look, whenever you have someone that needs to see it, by all means, Mm. let me know. Because it's different once they understand you're selling to a third party. When we're bringing showings, it's reaffirming their expectations because they're Mm. like, oh, good. They said they can bring buyers. They're bringing buyers. But when someone's being promised, hey, I'm the cash buyer, I just need to get my contractor Mm -hmm. in there, the contractor gets in there, oh, I just need to get my agent in there. Like people are trying to shuffle through cash buyers and labeling them different things. Each time they come through, it makes them more uncertain because they're like, wow, are you buying the house or not? Like, why do you keep need to seeing it? Why why do you keep need need to go through it, right? So it's, it's different when your interests are aligned and the expectations are aligned. There's a lot more cooperation mm. and you can be much more transparent with everything. And they're actually like rooting you along because mm. they want the deal done. And, you know, we foster a lot of goodwill through our whole sales process and just our, our kind of empathetic approach with them where we're really tailoring everything around what we think is going to meet their needs and, and put them at ease, basically. Mm. Yeah. These are the type of people that are going to go for this type of experience. Like if someone that just wants their house sold for the most amount of money, they're going to hire a traditional agent. They're going to stage it. They're going to go through the normal open house process. So this is basically an alternative where they can get most of the convenience of a cash offer and then get a good portion of the money of a retail sale. But we're kind of in the middle dealing with the dirty work that Mm -hmm. they don't necessarily want to do, including handling repairs and things like that, helping them move. The biggest thing that I see all the time, right, is that people are like, you know, a novation is illegal, right? Like you can't do a novation, right? And the reality of it is, you know, it's not necessarily true, right? And you hear kind of the same thing with wholesaling. You know, I've been wholesaling since like 2014 and I've wholesaled a lot of houses and it's definitely not illegal, right? But you have to go about it the right way, right? You need the proper documentation. You need to set the right expectation and the right standard, and you need to know what you're doing, right? And at the end of the day, Rich is a phenomenal guy to take advice from, which is why I wanted to make the video and really break down what innovation is, okay? So again, innovation is not illegal, but you do have to do it the right way. And there are people out there doing it the wrong way, okay? So the biggest thing with Rich is he doesn't like to operate in the gray area at all, right? He does not like to do what maybe other people would do in a typical innovation, okay? So he's setting a very good expectation from the beginning, you know, and he's getting an attorney in fact to actually sign the listing documentation on behalf of the seller, but he's not actually signing, like when it comes to, you know, getting that retail buyer, you know, when that agent goes and actually finds the retail buyer, he's not signing all the closing documents on behalf of the seller. He actually will have the seller sign all the closing documents. And to be honest with you, um, until interviewing Rich, you know, I've heard a lot of people say that they sign everything on behalf of the seller. So I can tell you right now that of all the people I've talked to about doing an ovation, you know, Rich is definitely the most, I would say, you know, black and white, right? He's not operating in the gray area because he set such a good expectation with the seller the seller is okay with signing all of the, you know, closing documentation and everything like that, right? He doesn't need to do that on behalf of them because he's not trying to hide anything from the seller. And again, I think this is the biggest thing that you should take away. And a lot of wholesalers and and people doing novations make the mistake of trying to hide stuff from the seller, right? And the moment you get into the mindset of like, I have to hide something from somebody, you're probably not doing it the right way. The most important thing is full disclosure. Mm -hmm. The seller needs to understand you're selling to a third party for a profit. Okay. You also need to have the correct paperwork. 
So the paperwork, and there's different opinions on what the correct paperwork is. Mm -hmm. But I'll just tell you the paperwork I use that we've done millions of dollars in transactions. I've never been sued once. Uh, knock on wood, yeah. right? I'm going to jinx myself now, but never been sued. Yeah. Never had a seller incredibly upset with me. You use a, a AB contract with a, a purchase and sale agreement. Okay. Very similar to a wholesale agreement that you'll see. It's like a three pager. It's got some additional language in there, uh, disclosing that we can use the MLS and also some additional language uh, disclosing that we can assign it or innovate it to a third party purchaser. In either such a case, uh, the seller shall cooperate fully with signing the third party uh, buyer's uh, uh, offer. So there, there's a few things. Here's the red flags. I don't know if you know this, but the majority of the views that we get are from people that are not subscribed. So do me a huge favor and subscribe if you like the podcast so far. Smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And let's just go ahead and get back to the interview. You don't want to do a POA, a power of attorney, and sign the seller's offer on behalf of the buyer. Okay. So that's one thing and, you and don't want to do. Well, without trying to be a lawyer, because sure. I'm definitely not, um, there's, a, there's a few practical reasons why. One, the lender is going to say, who's this power of attorney? Mm -hmm. Do they have an interest in this? You know, is this the seller's grandson? Yeah. Is this a investor? Why are they signing on behalf of the seller? it makes it look like you're doing something sneaky. And if the seller's not incapacitated, they're wondering like, yeah. why are they hiding this information? It's just immediately raising red flags. Sure. Now we've got plenty of deals done like that with only a few times at causing problems, but I'm a big, I'm a big believer that like, you should always find the path of least resistance yep. and use it consistently. Sure. You never know when the lender is gonna have a problem with that and can blow up the deal. Then you wanna build a sustainable company. Absolutely. You know, yeah. Absolutely. So signing the seller's, uh, uh, signing on behalf of the seller for the offer, that's one red flag. Okay. Uh, collecting the seller's proceeds, and believe it or not, there's actually people that teach that. Um, <laughs> I would not recommend yeah. that, okay? <laughs> like, that seems like a good way to get a district attorney involved. Yeah. Even if you you are not a bad actor, <laughs> it makes you look a lot like one. For sure. So I would, avoiding that, um, and then the third thing is just when people don't disclose and they try to be sneaky about it, even though it's in the contract, mm -hmm. but they don't explain it to the seller yeah. and they kind of try to just do it without them knowing it. Um, I think ethically it doesn't sit well. And then also it's just, it's not really, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that if everyone understands what's going on and agrees to it, you're doing fair business and no one's at fault. Yep. But when someone thinks you're doing one thing and then you're really doing something else, that's when you're setting yourself up to, to be in a bad situation mm. where they're getting upset, they're feeling cheated, they're feeling scammed. Um, and I, I feel like it's completely unnecessary. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're a great communicator, you should be able to present what the true value mm -hmm. is that we're bringing to Agreed. them and let them agree with it or disagree. So kind of in conclusion, you know, again, what we talked about a little while ago and what Rich really talks about a lot is understanding that you've got to take more of a consultative approach, right? You know, you're not really trying to sell them on anything, you know? And again, understand, I think, you know, you might be wondering, like, how do I find, you know, somebody to do innovation? Well, you obviously, like Rich was talking about, you can't market to people doing, you know, that would want to do innovation, right? What you can do is if you're already a wholesaler or you're looking to get into wholesaling, you know, you're going to take that same approach, right? The, whatever marketing you're doing, okay? You know, again, I, I wholesale a lot, right? And we do a lot of marketing to sellers, okay? And we niche it down, you know, by how much equity they have, by how long they've owned the property, by, you know, potential other motivation factors, such as are they getting a divorce, right? Um, you know, did they inherit the property? Did, you know, somebody pass away, right? And there are a lot of variables, you know, to somebody who would be in a distressed type of situation, and you're going to market to those same people. So the same people that would maybe be a good candidate for a cash offer, right, uh, which would be a typical wholesale deal, that same homeowner would be a potential candidate for innovation, but you won't know until you get on the phone with them, right? You're not going to know until you kind of do that consultation with them to see what would be actually the best solution for them. And I think if you take the approach of how do I serve the seller, right? How do I serve the homeowner? 
And how do I do what it is that they need done at the highest level? You will succeed, right? I think it's the people that they they have a, a thought in mind, they have a solution in mind, and they try to kind of shove that down the homeowner's you know throat, right? And we see that in all areas of real estate at the end of the day, from you know real estate agents to wholesalers to people doing novations to people doing you know subject to and creative finance, where they have kind of one thing they're good at, and they're trying to shove that down the seller's throat, right? My advice to you would be to take a consultative approach with every homeowner that you're talking to really figure out what they're trying to do, why they're trying to do it, what they want, how quickly they want to get there, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can tailor the perfect solution for what it is that they actually need. In order for us to give them the perfect solution, we really need to understand what their goals are, what their problems are, what they're trying to avoid, what they're trying to go towards. And the whole first third of the, um, of the sales process, there's no negotiation, there's no pushback, there's mm -hmm. zero friction. It's yeah. consultative and it kind of just sets things up. And then when we do get in the negotiation phase, it's always us and the seller versus the data and the decision makers. Mm. So we're always positioning ourselves as a advocate for the mm -hmm. seller. And I always position myself as a low level non-decision maker that's basically just trying to put the deal together that is just like a real person where I'm not their adversary. You know, I'm on the same side. Mm -hmm. You know, we have limited resources. We can't bring on every deal, right? Yep. And I'm trying to figure out a way that we can make this work and where I think the decision makers will be. So the whole sales process is kind of tailored towards keeping them on our side, mm -hmm. having very little headbutting and very little back and forth and then we have a way to build up momentum and pitch it in a mm -hmm. very compelling way uh, at the end where mm -hmm. it's it's dramatic and it's uh, it's almost like reciting lines for a movie. There you have it. That is a novation in a nutshell. Okay, so if you're looking to get into the world of novations, you know, definitely go back, rewatch the video. If you have any questions, definitely drop a comment down below. I would love to answer any questions that you might have, uh, and you know, try to help you out in any way that I possibly can. If you want to watch the entire episode with Rich, uh, I'll also link that down in the description below. And if you want to check out any of my other wholesaling content, then go watch, you know, some other content on my channel. Again, I am like the second largest wholesaler in the nation. We do anywhere from 30 to 50 wholesale deals a month on average. And I have a lot of content on my channel talking about wholesaling real estate and how you can, you know, get out of your day job or, you know, achieve your financial goals or whatever through wholesaling real estate. So I definitely recommend that you go watch all of that content. Also, it would mean the world to me if you would subscribe to my channel, like the video if you haven't already. Again, I appreciate you and I'll look forward to seeing you in a future video.